Welcome, my name is Sherry Bevan and I run The Confident Mother, which is an independent coaching practice. And today I'm interviewing Kathy Thornton in my career conversations group. And we're going to be talking specifically about job hunting after redundancy, which I thought was a really appropriate topic given um, what the current industry is, is looking like and what the current economy is looking like. So managed to get that out without fluffing my line. So Kathy, very warm welcome to you this evening. Thank, Thank you so much for joining me. Right, so um, I'll just introduce myself. My name yes. is Kathy Thornton. Um, I graduated in 1992 um, with a degree in electronics. Um, from then until 2007, I was um, an embedded software engineer. Um, when I decided to kind of change career tack and, and, and kind of self-train to be um, a project manager, kind of specifically for software type projects. So I've got quite a lot of, you know, sort of work experience from 1992 until today. Um, and in that time, in those however many years it is, I, I don't care to, uh, to count them, um, I've actually been made redundant five times. So I'm oh, kind wow. of like, I know, <laughs> I'm kind of like a bit of an old hand at it. But um, the one thing I would say is that of those five, none of them have been the same. Every experience has been completely different. Oh, okay. So, That's interesting. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, five times. So I guess you're the perfect person to kick off this series of interviews. <laughs> Um, yeah. with people to talk about redundancy because I'm sure you've got some um, some real insights to share with us so do you want to tell us about um, the uh, I, I suppose just you know which, which which one of those times has been the easiest to deal with I suppose or has has there not been an easy one versus a, a more complicated one um, I think the first one was probably the easiest. Um, it was 2007, the market was fine. It was an office closure. So there was nothing to link. You kind of get into this mindset where you think it's something personal and it, yes. there was nothing personal in it. It was just like the office was closing. And I'd already, well, I managed to line up work before I'd even finished my sort of redundancy period oh, right. or whatever. Yeah. So, so that was probably the easiest. Yeah. Um, I guess. What about, most, um, what about the most difficult one then? Um, I, uh, I think the next one, which mm. was a year later. So I lined up my, 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 it was my first project management role. So I basically, in 2007, I was made redundant as, um, as a software engineer. And then I started as a project manager and got made redundant at the end of 2008, which is, you know, when the recession was hitting. Yeah. Um, I'd only got a year's experience at that time. So it made it particularly difficult to get another role, another job. Um, and it was one of those where it, it was kind of 20% of the company was being made redundant, but it, it was the first time I had had to deal with that whole, it's the role and not me that's being made redundant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was living in um, a rural area where I was struggling to find work anyway, um, kind of didn't really see it coming. So yeah, that was, that was quite difficult. And, and part of it as well was some of the people around me weren't necessarily very sort of empathetic about how it was to be made redundant. So I had some quite weird comments made. So um, just to kind of get into the technicalities of it, my contract, I've got a three month um, notice period and um, I could take payment in lieu of notice. So I just said, I'll take the money and I'll see you later. And they were kind of saying to me, well, what, don't you want to come in and finish the project? Don't you want to, don't you want to come into work for those three months? And I was kind of like, but you've told me my role's redundant. So why are you, you know, why is that, why are you even asking that question? So there was mm. kind of a bit of a, you know, lack of empathy as to how, how the, you know, how it felt. Um, one of the things that really helped me was we were, um, we had a business um, consultant who was working with the company at the time. And he was the one that kind of said to me, don't go down to their level, you know, maintain your, you know, sort of self-respect. It's not about you. Just keep on moving, you know, that kind of thing and, and he was very positive and, and even sort of you know six months later I was still ringing him and getting you know a bit of motivation almost to to you know sort of keep going. 
that's really good yeah. that you found somebody like that because I think very often as you said I mean because I got made redundant shortly after you in two, mm. February 2009 so and at that time you know for the there were so many organisations going through redundancy, like certainly mm. in the financial services sector and the legal sector, which is where I work. So it's, I suppose perhaps in some ways it's, it became more acceptable to get made redundant. Whereas I right, think perhaps yeah. 10 years ago, it was still seen, if, if somebody was being made redundant, I, I think there was, um, um, you know, people felt well if, if you're being made redundant there must be a reason why they've picked you and not Fred yeah. who sits next to you whereas I think in 2008 because there were such wide chunks of not chunks of people but swathes of people being made redundant mm. and firms cutting back that I think in some ways it, it made redundancy um more acceptable so it's right I think it's really good then that you were able to find somebody who um who was able to show you that empathy and support you and encourage you because I think yeah. it's so easy to get caught up in that thing it's me um yes. that's being made redundant when in fact it's not you it's the role that's being made redundant but it's very difficult to detach from that personal person that yeah, personalness yeah. of it I don't that's the right the word I'm looking for yeah, I know what you mean <laughs> yeah yeah so how did you do that how did you kind of detach yourself from like the emotions around it um I think I'm not really sure I think you know again it was like the support from people like this this person who who kind of because it is you know you're right it's really easy to to get drawn into this whole you know negativity about what have I done what you know is it am I not any good at my job or whatever and it is really easy and there were you know as well as this person there was some other people who were you know very supportive so I think it's it's almost like a I don't know, like a case of kind of grief for it, feel all the emotions that you're going to feel, mm. but you just, you can't, you can't, you've got to pick yourself up. You just, you just have to. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't, I can't really answer it any better than that. It's, yeah. it's, there are emotions that you have to go through and you just kind of have to accept that those are going to happen, but just not get drawn into it as, you know, kind of know that you just I, I kind of describe it as taking the moral high ground but just kind of you know knowing that you're better than that and um yeah just because what what's the what's the alternative really just Sit yeah and cry. <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> yeah and you don't get another job by sitting and crying <laughs> no no um it, it it that doesn't work does it so um mm. yeah it's 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 tricky so, so what about um, what, when you were job hunting? Obviously, job hunting at the end of 2008, beginning of 2009, yeah. you know, the market was tough. So how, how, did you, how long did it take you to find another job? Um, it took me six months. Right. So I was working, I think it was the start of June. So I was, I was made redundant at the beginning of December and then I, was, I, I, I was working at the start of June. But what I did have to do um, was accept a different role you know it was kind of like we believe in your skills and abilities but we just need you to learn about the industry before you know you take on the role that you applied for kind of thing so right. it was it was kind of like a, a step backwards almost so that yeah. I could start moving forwards again yeah and how did you feel about having to take that step backwards first um to be honest after six months you know with I don't think I I can't remember. I'm, I think I had one other interview in the six months. Um, so I was kind of overjoyed that I'd got an opportunity. And yeah, it's a step back, but it's, you know, it's a stepping stone for where you want to go. So, you know, I was, I was kind of all right with that. <laughs> and um, it shows they must have believed in you and believed in, you know, your skills and your personality to even offer that. Because they could have said, well, well, we'll wait for the, the next person to come along who's got the right experience so they must have liked you yeah yeah i've never i've not really thought about it like yeah, that especially yet, at that time yeah. when the job market was so tough in 2000 yeah so they yeah. obviously they obviously liked you so since since that role then have you always been in project management since in in one yes. software project i've done i was a development manager but it, it's pretty much the same as um project manager it's a bit more technical but yeah I've, yeah pretty much yeah so I've got, mm. I think it's 13 years, 13 years experience as project manager now. So, wow. Wow. 
Wow. And um, you mentioned you've been made redundant a couple of other times on, yeah. on top of that as well. So what was what was different about those? Was there anything that stood out for you from those other experiences? Um, the one, so <laughs> it just gets a bit mad now. So the, <laughs> the, the, the one where I took a step backwards, um, I got to six months there and they made me redundant. Oh, no. And, and I, I think that's probably like a, a result of the recession. Um, and they just hadn't, they'd planned that, you know, the, the forecasts or whatever weren't great. So, um, mm. that one was, that, that one again was quite, I found that quite difficult because that did feel personal. And that um, must've been because, around Christmas time as well. Um, it was September, October Yeah. and I was relocating. So I just sold the house where, wow. where I was, I'd relocated. Uh, I was renting and then they said right we're having a round of redundancies um, but again I I managed to get um, another role um, doing doing project management well development as a development manager before hmm. um, you know before at the end of my redundancy period so I kind of you know joyously went back into them and said yeah and I'm earning more than I was with you so <laughs> <laughs> So that was, yeah, so it, that started off, it, it always, it, it's all, when it's, when it's a bit of a shock, you need to kind of gather yourself together and, and then, you know, sort of keep on, you know, get, get your plans together and do something about getting another role. So there's always that kind of initial shock, but um, if you can kind of sort it out, it, it, it take, you know, sort it out, if you can find another role quite quickly, um that that's obviously quite good for your mental state yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> so what what you you mentioned that um there's this one particular person who was very supportive and yeah empathy but what else helped you while you were you know going through not after you've been made redundant but you know when you're then job hunting after that what what helped you stay sane i suppose and stay positive and confident um, from my point of view, I'm, I always feel better if I'm taking charge of something. So That's the project I, manager in you? <laughs> probably, yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm a control freak or anything. <laughs> but um, the first thing I do is, is, you know, you kind of let the dust settle, just get your emotions together and, I, and I'll do my CV. So that's me taking control. And then I'll go and ring some agents. So I look on the, online for, you know, for roles that are advertised. So from my point of view, that's that's um that that's me taking control and that's because i can't control the redundancy situation there's nothing mm. i can do about that no. really i mean there are yeah. processes but generally by the time they've said to you you're at risk you know and well in my experience that it's it's kind of um the companies i've worked with are so small that being at risk is almost the same as as you know the decisions already made yeah. Yeah. um so yeah so from my point of view i you know I, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm looking for a role now. I'm not. I've not been made redundant. I'm looking for a role now. So what I'm doing now is different to what I've done in the past, just because the market's very different. Right. So what I've done in the past is gone to gone to the recruiters and or applied for roles or or in the in the early days when I didn't know any better, I've just applied for roles. So I've done my CV. You know, I I I, I tweak my CV for the role I'm applying for. And then I, you know, apply and uh, and that's it, it kind of thing. But I'm taking control and it's and it's my, you know, me pushing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a bit different now because there's so many people looking for work, um, mm. or it, that's how it feels in the industry that I am for the roles that I'm looking for. So I'm kind of spending more time networking and focusing on that. I feel like. Um, I'm kind of in charge of my own destiny in a, in a lot of ways. So I'm, mm -hmm. you know, sort of um, talking to recruiters, building relationships. And I know it's kind of a little bit late for that in a lot of ways, but I still, you know, it's still a positive thing to be doing. And it'll and hold you in good now, stead in the future anyway. Yes, definitely. And even now, a lot of the recruiters that I'm speaking to are, are, are motivating me to keep on looking as well. So there's kind oh, of like a double-edged thing to it yeah. yeah yeah oh that's good that's good and how did you look after your kind of like your mental health like you know staying positive when you've been when you've gone through redundancy 
Um, I'm not sure really, probably. I mean, I do a lot of running, so I like, if, wow. if, if I'm having a bad day, I'll just go outside, even if it's just for a walk and just, I'll be in the woods or I'll be on the hills or, you know, and, and for me, that can actually like completely turn my mind around if I'm, you know, if I'm grumpy when I wake up in the morning, I can go outside and feel so much better when I get back. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, I think there's, there's a lot to be said for just getting outside and getting access to nature or just the just the outside air yeah. even if it's not sunny you know even to well where I am today it's a, it's a bit wet and miserable but I mm. still go out for a walk after this just to just to get out of the house for um for a bit so I think that's really powerful yeah I've, uh, and this this time around I've started doing a bit of yoga and a bit of meditation as well mm. just to get a bit of calmness and a bit of you know sort of I could I could easily sit in front of my laptop all day on LinkedIn or you know looking on the job sites but actually you do need to take a break from it because otherwise it just you know it consumes you and you can't think of anything else and, and I'm not sure yeah. that's such a good thing. Yeah I think that taking a break is really um, really important because it is easy like you say to just get caught up in just spending all day looking at LinkedIn or job ads or mm. you know applying for jobs um, and, and before you know it, the whole day is gone um, mm. doing that. And then it, I think then sometimes it just feels like you've, you've not got anywhere because you've not made any tangible progress. Whereas at least if you've gone for what you've done, you've cleared your head at least, if nothing. Yeah. 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 Mm. So what did you learn about yourself when you went through redundancy? Any kind of insights into your mm. own way of working or thinking? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I think as I'm reasonably confident now, I didn't always used to be confident and I don't know whether that's as a result of sort of age and experience or going through things like this, you know, five redundancies, you know, you've, you've got to come out stronger the, the other side of something like that. So I don't yeah. know whether it's, um, um, yeah, I, I, I think tenacity i think if you look at my linkedin profile it says tenacious project manager yes, it just, does. The, yes, just, the, <laughs> yeah, just the keeping going and you know yeah i mean la last week i had a contract and it fell through at the last minute and i was oh, absolutely yeah, I saw devastated that. yeah and it's just like pick yourself up you know something will come along and it's and and i even now i mean i don't necessarily find it easy but i've got people that i can speak to who will go you know recruiters friends whoever who say look you're doing the right thing you know something will come along and i know it's all a bit sort of i don't know some people don't like this you'll be all right sort of comments but actually you need to know that you will be all right you need to believe that you'll be all right yeah and i think yeah. having people around you when you're having a bad day who just go come on look it's all right just do this or have you thought of doing that or you you know just keep on pick yourself up that sort of thing for me anyway yeah. works really well yeah i think surrounding yourself with people who can be positive and supportive and encouraging is is really powerful um yeah and can really really help things along i remember when i got made redundant um i ended up doing that little sort of contract bits of work for various different people that you know my, my dad put me in touch with somebody and you know various people put me in touch so it might have only been two or three days work here and there doing yeah some weird things mm -hmm. <laughs> not that weird but um but I think you know it, it always felt great to, I'm doing something useful and practical and yeah. tangible almost yeah. when I was when I wasn't working in 2008 I had a friend who'd got his own business so I went and did, I'm not going to say bookkeeping, but I did the sort of admin, you know, putting the orders into the system and putting the payments into the system. And you know what? It's nothing to do with really with what I do now, but it's good experience to have, have done that and seen a bit of a different side of a business that I wouldn't yeah. probably normally see. So, yeah. you know, it's all sort of beneficial if you can, if you can get that sort of work as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as we kind of come to a finish then, any sort of final tips for people who, who are listening of, you know, what helped, what, what, what didn't help? Um, I, I think for me, I th I'm just going to summarise really what, 
what we've already said i mean everybody says it's not the role it's not you it's the role and that it really is true and you really need to hold on to that because you know yeah that is so important um again take control decide how you're going to deal with it what you're going to do you know take matters into your own hands because you, you can't you, you you can't i i've had situations where i know it's almost like if they don't want me fine i'm going that sort of attitude i don't want to be sort of fighting over it or or whatever but that that's just the way i deal with it but it's um it's taking control and going right that's fine i don't like it but that's the way it is and i'm going to do a b and c so that's that's always helped me surrounding myself with positive people has been really good and i think the thing that i have been almost proudest of is being able to kind of say i the company can behave how it likes and i can't change that but i have my sort of values and i'm not and, and i'm not going to compromise those you know no matter how the company behaves if that makes sense yeah yeah um and that's so retaining I, that that prof your own professionalism or your own standards yeah yeah sometimes it the it feels like there's a lot of provocation to to not do that mm, mm. but it, it i find it i feel a lot stronger if i can go do you know what i'm better than that i'm not i'm not going to retaliate you know i've got my pride i don't know whether that's the right word but you know um yeah i mean I, i've been made redundant in situations where the I mean, the I don't, I don't know the third fourth no the last time the last time i got made redundant um there was clearly a reason they clearly wanted to there was a company buyout and i was just from the old company and they wanted to get rid of everybody from the old company and they'd got rid of most of the management already and so they started on the whole um you know they gave me a pay rise and then a month later they're saying um well we're concerned about your performance and i was like oh <laughs> you know i've just had a pay rise how, how how does that work and then they realized i'd been working for them for one year and 50 weeks and they needed to, you know ah. when, when you and so straight away it's just like right we're making you redundant and you know i don't that isn't something that's acceptable in my you know sort of world morally ethically whatever so just to kind of take it on the chin and know that i'm better than that as as really helped me i think yeah yeah absolutely if um anybody who's else who's dialed in and listening if you want to um if you've got any questions for kathy feel free to pop those in the in the chat box but it sounds like um you've got some really great tips there on on how to stay positive which i think is i think can be one of the hardest things when you know when you're job hunting anyway not just after redundancy but when you're job hunting then trying to stay positive and keeping going and, and and looking after yourself it's it can be tough can't it yeah definitely definitely and you've got to be kind to yourself and know you know you are going to have bad days and and just knowing that you know that's not going to last forever i think is um is important yeah yeah so um so you're currently looking now you I, I know you saw your um on linkedin that you're um the contract that you had lined up fell through at the last yeah. minute which yeah. must be really really frustrating but uh, just one of those one of those things isn't it that that i've i've really struggled with that with the whole emotional um insecurity to security to back to insecurity i've really struggled with that yeah i'm not surprised because um, that happened at quite short notice as well yeah yeah but what i didn't what i don't want um is to feel i'm not a victim do you, do you know what i mean that's yeah. how i wanted the post to come across yeah and somebody gave me the perfect opportunity to say he said oh you, your confidence must be crushed and i was like no actually my confidence is fine i'm really good at what i do and you know it's holding on to those sort of beliefs um that kind of helps yeah when, when... and i think that's the thing when you know what you're good at and what your skills are and what experience you've got it makes it so much easier for you to hold on to that inner confidence mm. because you know what you're good at um mm. uh, but I, I, I guess that perhaps can be a bit harder if you're at the earlier stages in your career maybe when maybe yes. you've got less um clarity about where your strengths 
are but obviously you've been you've been doing what you do for a, for a yeah. while so you've got that that confidence that you get from just knowing your own skills and strengths and experience I guess yeah yeah yeah, yeah. definitely fabulous well Kathy thank you so much for taking time this evening to talk to me I'm hoping everybody who is either listening to the recording or is listening live hope you've enjoyed listening to Kathy's perspective so thank you very much um and a couple of comments in the thing Ellie saying found your perspective a real tonic so that's lovely thank you Ellie and Neha is saying thank you thank you for sharing your experience very positive so thank you Kathy it's been really really valuable and I'm hoping that by running this series of um, interviews in the career conversations group that will give other women um, the confidence to know that it's to, to be reminded that it's not them it, it's it's not about them it's about the role and you know to surround yourself with positive people and to and to learn uh, lessons from people who've been through it before so thank you very much fingers crossed for your next uh, contract you. comes along quickly <laughs> and um again thank you for your time this evening brilliant thank you thank you kathy uh,